So the, the transition to 5G mobile networks uh, will come with huge challenges. Uh, I can give you two examples. First one is the fact that uh, we'll have a um, huge amount of traffic uh, that's generated by applications such as video applications and from social networking applications. And the second major um, challenge, I would say, is uh, the fact that you have a, a vast uh, diversity of sources, of objects, that are going to generate all this traffic from, uh, you know, you have in your pocket a smartphone, maybe uh, you have a tablet, uh, but uh, tomorrow you will have uh, objects like cars and buses, uh, sensors in the, in the smart city, sensors in the smart house, uh, even wearable devices like watches, uh, glasses, all of this is going to uh, generate a, a large amount of uh, traffic and all of that has to be processed by, by, the, by the core network, by the wired network. It's uh, uh, as an opposition to the philosophy taken so far by the 4G uh, mobile standard. In 4G mobile standard, the idea is that uh, service providers are trying to keep 100% of the control of all the traffic uh, inside the network. And that creates a lot of complexity and also overhead. We need to feed back a lot of measurements from all the objects to the network to uh, make control efficient. So in perfume, we're going to take pretty much the exact uh, opposite philosophy uh, based on a simple idea. Uh, the idea is that uh, many of the objects that we've been talking about, not all of them, but many of them, have some uh, local uh, computing capability, memory capability, and also c communication capability, for example, using Bluetooth to communicate with the environment. These capabilities are not exploited by the network providers today, and they are, they are used to run games and nice applications, but not to increase the, the quality of the network. The main idea of uh, Perfume will be to try to uh, let objects communicate and coordinate to uh, create a kind of collective intelligence among all of these objects. Um, and we think that this collective intelligence will allow us to uh, solve um, some of the big problems that we have for the future mobile internet. I'll give you two examples. Uh, one is the interference uh, that is created by these, uh, all these uh, transmissions and, and communications between objects that, uh, that are not coordinated. Another one is the management of the new type of content which is redundant. We call it uh, reusable content. I'll give you an example. If you go to a, a football game and you try to upload to the internet or you try to send to your friends a small video of the game using a social networking application, uh, maybe you have uh, next to you another person who is trying to, to do the same, so he's filming the same game with a, only a slightly different uh, viewpoint, and, and basically you have a lot of redundancy between these two types of traffic. So in Perfume, we'll uh, try to use coordination between the terminals to re reduce redundancy and make room uh, for additional traffic, so to avoid um, wasting resources. If you look at the brain, the brain is capable of a massive intelligence, uh, but if you look deep down in the details, uh, the brain is composed of neurons. The neurons taken separately do not have much capability, but it's only through connections through neighboring neurons and through exchange of communication that you were able to uh, create this collective intelligence. So the idea of perfume is try to emulate this principle uh, at the level of a, of a mobile communication uh, network for the future internet. To put these uh, nice principles uh, into practice, uh, we have a number of technical scientific challenges. Uh, basically, I would say the number one is to try to understand the fundamental limits. So what is the best you can do if you could connect and coordinate all these objects together? So to solve this question, we need to put some theoretical tools that have never been combined together in the past or very little. One of them is the theory of communication information. And the other one is, the, is, a, is a theory coming from the world of control of processes, uh, which is the theory of, of decentralized decision. So by putting this together, we hope to, to, uh, to give or get some idea of the fundamental limits. Once this is done, uh, the next step will be trying to develop algorithms and computer programs that will approach the performance limits that uh, would have been described earlier. 
And as a third, the final stage, uh, we're planning a, a real-life uh, testing phase for the project where we will uh, rely ourselves on uh, a nice platform that we have here at Eurecom that was created a few years ago. Uh, it's an open source um, software platform for 4G and tomorrow 5G mobile communications. We'll rely on that to do, to do our experiments. So I think we have a nice environment here to attract uh, talented researchers. Uh, some of my colleagues are the, some of the best in France or in Europe some, or even in the world in the areas of mobile communication, both at theoretical algorithm and protocols uh, level. Um, so I think for students to join such an environment should be, should be interesting. And also um, an ERC project is, is something uh, unique in the sense that we, we get uh, uh, generous funding from, from Brussels to study this nice set of fundamental problems uh, with quite a lot of flexibility and liberty. I really want to take uh, the opportunity here to, to talk to, uh, to call for uh, students uh, and uh, master students and PhD students, talented researchers to join my team and work on this exciting project. Thank you very much.